Now today's video is going to be about what I did to get my FJ Cruiser ready for winter. Uh, and I say winter being that I live in a part of the country where we get snow and road salt. So this really only applies to vehicles in uh, those kind of regions. Um, I live in the northeastern U.S. and uh, we get anywhere between four and six months of road salt a year, uh, which is unfortunate but uh, because it rusts out our vehicles. But I'm going to show you what I do to kind of lessen the effects as much as possible uh, of the rust. Now the first thing that I like to do when I get my vehicles ready for winter, uh, ready to battle salt and uh, whatever else winter may throw at it, is I like to give the vehicle a real good wash and a heavy coat of wax. Um, and I'll also fill in any paint chips and whatever else that I may not have gotten to yet. So what we need to do is seal the base metal underneath the paint against the salt uh, and the corrosion effects of the salt. So the touch-up paint will obviously uh, put a physical, you know, a nice physical paint barrier on top of the metal. And then uh, any small little nicks and chips and scratches that we may not really pick up on and don't know to fill with paint, uh, the wax should help fill those in and uh, give us a nice little little barrier there. It's not as good as obviously painting, but uh, it's a lot better than leaving it bare metal and uh, just having the salt corrode it and eventual rust bubbling up, paint coming off, and then you know all you're left with is four rubber tires. And then the second thing that I do is I give the bottom of the vehicle a real heavy coat of uh, protectant. Now the stuff that I use is called fluid film. Uh, it's gained a lot of popularity in recent years and for good reason because it is excellent stuff. Uh, it comes in a spray can or if you have a, like a, you know, 30, 60 gallon compressor you can get a, uh, an air gun and uh, paint it on that way. I say paint but it's, uh, it's basically just an oil. It's a lanolin based oil so it's you know, environmentally friendly. We can kind of see it a little bit right here. You can see a little bit of texture on the frame, and that's just a lot of dirt that's sticking to that coating. And that's actually a good thing because it kind of helps cement the stuff in place. Um, now, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to have to wash my gloves, but this stuff does stay fluid, uh, you know, just true to its name. So I could take my finger, wipe it right here, and I would wipe the stuff right off. So it doesn't get hard, which means that it won't trap moisture underneath. And that's the biggest problem with most undercoatings, like an undercoating like this from the factory, uh, that in theory could separate itself from the metal, create a pocket, and allow for water to sit in there and rot the thing out. But since the fluid film stays fluid, we don't have that issue. And on the subject of if I were to wipe my finger on there and clean some off, it's self-healing, it's kind of self-leveling. So basically, if there's some missing, it will eventually migrate together and close that gap again. So I think it's excellent stuff. Um, so basically I just sprayed the whole frame front to back on this thing, inside and out. I got a nice little attachment that I can put on the spray can. Uh, that's probably a one and a half foot or so. Uh, a little tube that goes inside the frame and then sprays out all the fluid film. Did that inside the frame. Any cavity I could find on the underside of the body I did. And then I also sprayed any spot underneath the body where we were getting a little bit of surface rust. Uh, I sprayed inside the rocker panels. Uh, from the back side there's some plugs you can pull out. Uh, I didn't film any of that because it's a super messy process and uh, kind of like my camera how it is not being too greasy. Um, but yeah it's unfortunate that nobody did this before I got this vehicle because the passenger side rocker panel is pretty dang near rotted through uh, from the bottom side. It's not there yet uh, but hopefully the fluid film now will just keep it in its current state and won't get any worse. So I really don't want to get into replacing that. And I don't really think they make uh, replacement body panels for these things yet because they're still so new. And uh, who knows, maybe they won't because they're such a, a unique niche vehicle. Um, time will tell. But would I do this to a vehicle that was not being used in salty climates? Absolutely not. This stuff makes a mess. But it is extremely, extremely effective in holding rust at bay and prolonging the life of a vehicle that does see salt use. And those are generally the two things that I like to do. Uh, this year, I'm gonna actually add a third thing. Now, usually I keep a little bit of recovery gear in whatever vehicle I'm driving. Um, and this year, having the winch, I've decided to keep a little bit more. And I bought some new gear. Uh, well, new. <laughs> used off Craigslist, but uh, the guy never used it, so it was pretty much new. So um, I'm going to show you what right now what I'm going to be carrying this winter in here for recovery gear. 
Now new for me this year is the winch. I don't normally have a winch mounted to my vehicle year round, so that is, you know, potentially going to be useful. Um, and I have a video, if you haven't seen it, installing the winch and then this winch plate right here from US Off-Road. I'll throw a link down below if you want to check that out. Um, that was a, a really nice install. I, I like how this turned out. It's a nice factory look. Not too attention grabbing and it's uh, exactly what I wanted. Now to go along with the winch, this is a small selection of my overall recovery gear, but this is going to be the stuff that I carry this winter. Um, I could put bins of crap back here, but I don't see the point. So uh, we'll start with the elephant in the room. We've got these treads, uh, these tread traction boards here. They're tread brand. Of course, everyone knows the Max Tracks brand. Um, I credit Expedition Overland for bringing those to popularity. Uh, but these are the treads, and they're available a little cheaper than the Max Tracks are. And uh, some reviews I saw kind of seem to lead to the conclusion that these might be a little bit more durable than the Max Tracks, and they're also a little cheaper. Now, I got these off of Craigslist. I got four of them. I'm only going to carry two, but I got four and then a land anchor for the winch um, as a package deal. And I got a really good deal on it, so um, that's kind of really why I went with these. I would have done a little more research and tried to figure out uh, which traction boards would be better, or maybe even try to make my own somehow, but... Uh, that's basically why I have these ones. On top of that, I've got a 20-foot toe strap here. I've got two shackles um, on the front bumper. Uh, I'm not sure if it was clear or not, but I do have a couple shackle mounts on the front bumper. I've got this shackle to go on the trailer hitch in the rear. And then I've got uh, my version of a tree saver strap. It's really just kind of a lifting strap um, from Harbor Freight, but it works great as a tree saver, uh, and it's pretty cheap. So... Uh, actually, one thing I do have missing here is a snatch block. I like to keep a snatch block for the winch, uh, for winching at angles or multiplying um, winch power. So that will actually be in here, and I keep it all in this bag, uh, besides the treads, of course. And uh, yeah, I'll have to grab that snatch block and throw it in the bag, too. But that's all the gear that I'm going to carry for recovery. Um, I'll probably throw a shovel in here if we start getting too much snow. But uh, all this stuff will be good for use on ice and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the base kit right there. Now, just a couple other minor things I want to mention uh, is I also change out all my uh, windshield washer fluid for a winter mix. So they sell, where I live, they sell a summer mix and a winter mix for the washer fluid. The summer mix will freeze in the winter if it stays in the reservoir. So I make sure I flush uh, the majority of the summer stuff out and put the winter stuff in before we start getting freezing weather. And I also remove my trailer hitch. Now, some parts of the country, it's not legal to run a trailer hitch year-round. Where I live, it's perfectly fine, and I choose to do that uh, because I do pretty often pull a trailer, um, so it's kind of just a pain to pull it on and off. But additionally, I do it because it gives a little bit of low-speed rear-end protection. I've actually been rear-ended before where the trailer hitch has saved the rear bumper of the vehicle I was in. But if the trailer hitch stays in, it will eventually rust into place. I've actually had these rust so badly from road salt that I had to use a sledgehammer to get them out and a lot of time wasted just pounding on them, trying to get them loose. So what I do now is I just don't even run one in the winter. I guess I could grease it if I really wanted to, but uh, then we're exposing you know, the actual body of the hitch itself, and that's going to end up rusting and flaking the paint off, so I just choose not to run one in the winter. But anyway, we're losing daylight fast, I'm going to close this out. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Um, I protect the paint on top of some wax, protect the bottom side with fluid film, and carry a little bit of recovery gear, and uh, look forward to warmer weather.